What's up, fellow autism? I played some very manly games and I want to talk about them. On April 7th, 2009, Deadliest Warrior premiered on Spike, the cable channel most well known for some manly man shows like A Thousand Ways to Die. Her lovely lady lumps started expanding at an alarming rate. They grew to ridiculous proportions. That stripper's gonna bomb in her chest! Ren and Stimpy adult party cartoon. The Joe Schmo Show. What is going on? And Mansers. Can you fart so hard your balls explode? Yeah, that actually aired on TV. Anyways, Deadliest Warrior was a show about historical or modern warriors, basically giving out a ton of info on them and their weapons, plus some experts doing tests using said weapons to determine which of the two warriors of the week is the deadliest in a simulated fight to the death. Warriors such as the Irish Republican Army going at it against the Taliban. And one of the IRA's weapons of choice is a slingshot. Slingshot? Slingshot. <laughs> Which IRA is this? Now if you want a more deep dive into Deadliest Warrior and Spike TV in general, check out Billion's video on the matter. It is a really good video and I highly suggest you guys watch it after you watch this one. But what I will talk about are the two video games released for the PS3 and 360, Deadliest Warrior the Game and Deadliest Warrior Legends. Both games were developed by Pipeworks Software, known for uh, Merv Griffin's crosswords? Huh? Don't know that one? How about uh, Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy for the 360, Wii, and PS3? No? Uh, how, how about the console ports of Terraria? Ugh. Whatever. How did Pipeworks translate this fever dream into a video game? Let's find out, starting with Deadliest Warrior the Game, released in the year of our lord, 2010. Deadliest Warrior the Game is basically like the TV show in a way. It's a fighting game that pits two ancient warriors to a battle to the death. You pretty much just chop and slice your way to victory. You don't have standard light and heavy attacks. Instead, you have a low, medium, and high attack, plus a projectile that you can shoot or throw at your opponent. You can also do a special weapon attack, but I never used it as the button combination to do so never really worked for me. I could only do it in the training mode. If your opponent has low health, then you can perform a final strike, dealing an instant kill. So think of it like a dumbed down version of fatalities. In terms of realism, depending on what type of blow you deliver, the fighters can actually react to them. For example, if you take a good hit to your leg, you start to limp. And if you take a hit to your arm, it can become completely useless. I couldn't really make examples of these two. They rarely, if ever, happen during my two playthroughs, but I think it's a cool idea. And of course, since you're working with sharp weapons, you can chop off limbs. Now this ain't no Mortal Kombat or anything, but this shit gets brutal. When you play through the arcade mode, it's basically like most arcade fighters and where you defeat every character in succession. I chose the Samurai and the Apache. Why? I don't know, they just look cool. By default, the first to two wins, wins. After a few battles, you're treated to a mini game. And the only two mini games are you chopping up pig corpses and defeating a random dude in like 20 seconds. That's it, to my knowledge. There was no other minigames that I was able to do. There may be more, but I only played through the arcade mode twice before I called it a day. And that's pretty much it for the arcade mode. The controls are okay. Your character can move in any direction in the arena, so you're not locked to a path or anything. I'm playing the PS3 version, so triangle is your high attack, square is your mid attack, X is your low attack, circle is your projectile attack, and R1 is a heavier attack. The triggers are your block triggers, or as the game puts it, enter in guard mode. Pressing L1 allows you to switch your weapons. You can also parry an enemy's incoming attack if you time it just right, but I never did that during my playthrough. You can move sideways by moving the right stick in the direction you want them to go, useful for dodging attacks. If you hold both square and X, you can trigger your special weapon attack. The controls aren't bad, they don't get in your way or anything. I don't really have any complaints about them. In terms of graphics, they're a bit bland. It runs at a pretty low resolution, and I bet it runs lower than 720p, so the game looks really soft. The performance could be a bit better too, and I saw a good amount of screen tearing during gameplay, but it wasn't all that bad. The effects are okay, but I don't think there will be that much blood when you chop somebody up. 
I don't know. I've never tried it. And speaking of blood, look at this. This looks ridiculous. This doesn't look like blood. It just looks like they've doused themselves in red paint. In terms of arenas, there aren't a lot. The developers try to make each setting kind of fit the theme of your opponent, but unfortunately, there's no one unique level to a character. The levels end up repeating during your playthrough, and that's just laziness on the developer's part. The levels feel a bit empty, too. I wish they would have added something like spectators on some of the levels. It would have made it much more lively, but I guess this is just like the show You know, no one's watching these guys kill each other So I guess they got that part down and in terms of sound well, there's no music during battles. It's just ambience I guess they were trying to go with a realistic mood, but I do wish that there was some music It doesn't have to be no hyper pop DMB or anything, but something that fits the theme of the level You know what I'm saying overall the game isn't awful, but I think it's really forgettable and a tad boring but I've definitely played much worse. I give it two sliced limbs out of five. Now to Deadliest Warrior Legends, released in 2011. They made a sequel? Like, who bought the last game? I sure didn't. So it's basically the same as the last game, but this time you can play as actual historical figures such as Shaka Zulu, Alexander the Great, Genghis Khan, and others. That's a big step up from just simple generic warriors. I guess Spike actually gave Pipeworks a budget to license the warriors' likenesses or something. They probably realized that if you want to sell some copies, you better better use real people. New for this game is a tutorial mode, which was solely needed. It explains the controls quite well and shows off some new mechanics. For example, you can now grab an enemy to enter this mode and where you play rock, paper, scissors to try to either break your opponent's arm or leg or do a final blow. You don't need to wait until your enemy is at low health anymore. And this time, you can hold R1 to enter projectile mode and then press one of the face buttons to target at a specific area. So did they improve the gameplay at all? Uh, not really. Maybe it's just me, but it feels pretty much the same as before. It's not terrible, but I do wish they did more with it. The added features are welcome additions for sure, but it's still a bit forgettable like the last game. There are some questionable choices like removing the health meter entirely, so you don't know how much health you have left. There's a stamina meter now, but I don't think it means anything other than you won't be able to do certain moves, maybe, I don't know. I never really noticed anything like that. The game is also much more brutal in terms of limb chopping, but honestly, I think it's a lot harder to do that in this game. It only happened like three times in my two playthroughs of the arcade mode. Very disappointing. Graphics are pretty much the same as the last game, maybe a bit more polished. Blood on the warriors no longer looks like red paint, which is nice. And since we have real life warriors, there's a lot more voice acting than in the last game. The lip sync could be better though. Up, children of Zulu, your time has come! Up, destroy them all! We also have unique levels for every character now, a good choice, but there's still no music during battle, which kind of sucks. But that's for the main game. There's another mode called Generals, and all it is is a weird simulation thing. I don't know how to explain this mode. You place brigades in your territories, and then you try to conquer other territories and your enemies' territories too. It's boring. Very, very boring. Overall, this game is definitely an improvement over the previous game, but as I said, it's still very forgettable. But it's not a terrible game by any means, and I think it's worth taking a look at. I give it a 3 out of 5. We Spaniards know a sickness of the heart that only gold can cure. So what did you think about the Deadliest Warrior games? Let me know in the comments. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. And if you did, give this video a like. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss anything. Join the Discord, follow the socials, and if you're interested in old school G4 Tech TV or other VHS goodies, check out my other channels, Enon and Enon2. If you're wanting more Enon gaming, check out my review of Charlie's Angels for the GameCube, one of the best movie tie-in games of all time, and that game where that one girl goes, ha, 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 you know, that one game, you know, you know. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.